Oakland Athletics Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet, part of the NBC Sports Group. The Rangers have always been built with a stable of sluggers, yet in the last few seasons, the Rangers have added a starting staff and bullpen that can match anyone's in baseball. This formula has led them to two straight World Series appearances. The Athletics have started to build in the same direction. They have found some offense built around speed and power, showing off what's been missing in recent seasons. With their already strong pitching staff, they are built for the future, but the Green and Gold continue to hold their own in the tough AL West. Tonight, these two teams collide in game three of the four-game set. A's Rangers, next. It is Bart $2 Wednesday here at the O.Co. Coliseum. Nice crowd expected, and the A's set to take on the Rangers in game two our game three of this four game set each team has won a game so far in the series so we're just about set for baseball from the coliseum it's the a's and the rangers coming up and you're going to see it right here at comcast sportsnet california Hey again, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Some changes by the Athletics front office today. In fact, the A's have a new first baseman. His name is Brandon Moss. Evan Scribner takes his spot, and yes, Brandon Moss is up. Kilikai, who he designated for assignment, but Brandon Moss, more of an outfielder, but he said he's been playing a lot at first base. He actually asked Darren Bush, you want to get some reps at first base, so he's in the lineup tonight. He swings the bat well, 15 home runs in the minor leagues. Let's hope he can do that here, but we have to say, Kilikai, who played very well at first base when he got the opportunity, and of course, Brandon Moss now gets the shot at first base. So the pitching matchup, Colby Lewis and Bartolo Colon, a couple of good veteran yeah. pitchers. And they also give up a lot of home runs. Well, Bartolo Colon, if he does, he won't have anybody on base. A lot of solo <laughs> home runs from him. No doubt that he would just like to get some run support, be a little bit more consistent uh, like he was in the early part of the season. Still throws a lot of fastballs with the movement. On the other hand, Kobe Lewis, even though he gives up the home runs, one thing about him, if he falls behind, don't expect to get a fastball. He would throw a lot of sliders and counts that you might be looking fastballs. He's very confident with that pitch. And he's really the ace of this staff. And Ron Washington started the season with him. He really believes in it. And the Texas Rangers, still the best record in the American League, but not playing as well as they were at the beginning of the season. A's will try to take advantage of that tonight and again tomorrow in the series finale. Well, it lineups at first pitch from the O.Co. Coliseum. When we come back, get you all set for the A's and the Rangers.
is brought to you by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And by Toyota. Check out the great deals at your local Toyota dealer today. Oh, there's the new A's first baseman, Brandon Moss, working in the new mid. Get a couple minutes but tonight. It's going to be first base club. Game time weather brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now open daily. 62 degrees. Cool, clear night. It's a typical Coliseum night. 6th of June. And let's look at the lineup for the Texas Rangers for game three of this four game series. It starts with that man, Ian Kinsler. So Kinsler in the leadoff spot. He'll be followed by Anders, Hamilton, Beltre, Young, Cruz, Murphy, Napoli, and Moreland. And Bartolo Colon on the mound for the Athletic. 17 wins career against the Texas Rangers, the most uh, that he has against any club. Coming off of a start against the Royals, he gave up two runs in the first inning, and that was it. But unfortunately, the A's could not do anything other than just put a zero up, so Bartolo picked up the loss four and six, starting play tonight. First time this year facing the Rangers. Here's the A's defensive lead tonight. Cespedes in left, Crispin center, Reddick in right, Inge, Pennington Weeks, and Moss, Brandon Moss. At first, Kurt Suzuki is the catcher, and we're set to go. As Bartolo Colon has finished up the warm-up tosses, and Ian Kinsler steps in the box. Kurt Suzuki behind the plate every start for Cologne this season, which helps both. And the first pitch of the ball game to Kinsler is low. First pitch. So Cologne against Colby Lewis tonight. Kinsler hitting 277 with six home runs and 26 runs batted in. He is two for nine in the series. So it's going to be an interesting matchup with Cologne. Throws, as we all know, a lot of fastballs in the Rangers. Very, very powerful offensive team. Uh, there's no doubt the movement that Bartolo has on his fastball. If he can get the movement, keep the movement working, keep the ball on the ground, because they have the, the power, no doubt. But 28th start for right hander. Amazing of the 27 stars, 23 decisions. A 17 and 6 record with a sub 4 ERA against the powerful Rangers. Probably the different Rangers over the course of his career with the Indians, the White Sox, and the majority of the time probably facing them as a member of the Angels for four seasons. But Ray, he first started against the Rangers in August of 1997. Weighed 148 pounds. <laughs> so, no, about a 180. I think he said 180, and then he jumped to 205 in a heartbeat. There it is. Outside corner, strike three called, and that's how this ball game gets started. A strikeout looking by Kinsler. One out. Well, that's a two seam fastball. It just goes back to the outside part of the plate, and that's what happens to right handers. It's so effective. We saw it with the Angels when he had that streak of 38 consecutive strikes. Kinsler questioning home plate umpire Scott Berry, but the two seam movement. And he can simply go to the clubhouse and watch the movement on the back door two seamer basically and Scott Berry stayed with it. Your umpire alignment for tonight. Elvis Sanders steps in. Outside corner strike from Cologne. I just figure a left hander throwing to the right hander is a back door slider. That's essentially what. Bartolo Colon is doing with the two seam fastball to the right handers. Just misses that time. One and one to count. 89% fastballs, <laughs> and we have noticed it. <laughs> noticed it in his first start. They like to pump that fastball in there. But I still go back to time, and he's with the Chicago White Sox. And he just at that time it seemed like I mean he threw all the pitches before that but it just seemed like okay here it is fastball just amazed at how many fastballs he threw but with the movement that he has on his fastball you can understand why tonight so far he's elevating the fastball but still getting the strike call with the movement on his pitch hit towards center 
Coco Crisp to his left in the right center field. He makes the catch. Look at the socks by Coco. Yeah, that is a new look. Sesman smooths back to left field, and as you remember, in Kansas City, unfortunately, the two games that he played in left field, it was a different story for him. And right now, with the lefty, this is the first left-hander, and Josh Hamilton hits the ball to left field. It's going to slice towards the foul line. That's something that does not occur in center field. The ball straight at guys. That's an adjustment that he has to make. So first pitch strike to Hamilton. See Josh Hamilton, very good hitter, but accomplished outfielder. He goes between center field and left field. Murphy and left tonight with Hamilton in center. So 0 2 to Hamilton, 345 with 21 homers, 58 RBIs. Brandon Moss in the big leagues again. Fastball outside to Hamilton. But well, he's staying away from Hamilton and you just have to wonder if the left hander he likes to go inside, bring the two seam fastball back. Just watch Suzuki. If he moves in, that's the pitch. Not this time, staying away from him. And that one, a broken bat, but it's going to get through in the center field for a base hit. So Hamilton singles. For Hamilton, that's just his second hit in this series. And did stay away. A little surprising. They did not go in and just figure Bartolo <laughs> just throwing his glove at the ball. Adrian, well, Bell, maybe he might try it one time inside. But Josh Hamilton likes to extend his arms and maybe the way he opened his hips that Kurt Suzuki was anticipating that he was looking for the fastball in. So here's Beltre. Beltre hitting in the cleanup spot. Got a couple hits in the series, two for nine. The Rangers come in 33 and 23 is the record. Four and a half game lead over the Angels. And they holding on to that best record in the American League for quite a while now. That's what happens when you go 17 and 6 in April, which is what they did. They cooled off in May, going 14 and 14. Well, former A's manager Tony DeRosa, and I keep thinking about that exact thing, same thing that Ron Washington, no doubt, said, get off to a good start, and then everybody else can chase you. And that's what Tony always said in the late 80s when the club was going to the World Series three consecutive seasons. Well, it worked. Well, you think about it. If you get off the month of April and you get off to a good start, just like the they get that nice lead, then you know you start looking at the numbers. What other clubs have to do to get even with you, and what you have to do if you have that type of lead. It's the best way to start a season successfully in the month of April and let everybody try to catch you. Swing and a miss. So Beltre strikes out. Couple of strikeouts for Cologne. The Rangers strand one. We're headed to the bottom of the first.
starts with Javon Weeks at the top. Coco bats second. Josh Reddick third. Suspect is in the cleanup spot. And Smith the DH. Inge at third. Moss at first. Suzuki is the catcher. And Cliff Pennington will play shortstop. And it is Kobe Lewis, and he has had a lot of games against the Athletics in 2010, 2011, returning from Japan. He's yet to face the A's this year, but he knows that uh, he has an outstanding slider, as we mentioned, and he will throw it as we show the percentages. It should be very high in the percentage that he throws, the one pitch that he really enjoys, and that is a slider. Murphy, Hamilton, and Cruz in the outfield for Texas. Beltre, Andrus, Kinsler, Moreland around the infield with Mike Napoli behind the plate. So Week steps in. Game three of this four game series. First, the A's won big on Monday night, 12 to 1. Rangers bounced back last night and won 6 to 3. First pitch from Colby Lewis, a high strike call to Jamal Weeks. Weeks hitting 228 with a couple of home runs. He is 2 for 9 in this series with of RBIs. And that one to Beltre, who was playing in. He goes down to make the play, and that is out number one. Here's our true story brought to you by McDonald's. Hey, look at that matchup. That was September 22nd of last year. Jamal Weeks hits his first major league home run, and he does it against Colby Lewis, and it happened right here at the Coliseum last year, September 22nd. A silent treatment from the boys, and all those guys are gone, so maybe that's what happened. You give Jamal, it's not on treatment, and right. you get traded. That's right. <laughs> so Brandon <laughs> Allen, Ryan Sweeney, and that group of guys on the bench. Brandon Allen, unfortunately, today designated for assignment by the Tampa Bay Rays. So the two first basemen, along with Derek Barton in spring training, both out of options, and both on this same day were designated for assignment. Kyle Kaihui by the A's, Brandon Allen, the Rays. So 0-2 to Coco Crisp. Coco's a little time off. If we can straighten things out, he has not started in the last three games, but in there tonight. And the 0-2 pitch, and high fastball, and Crisp swings and misses. So that's two outs here in the bottom of the first. Well, they pulled the socks throwing the stirrup socks, but the third off position. the high fastball. Right that's running out of the strike zone. Tried to do a no strike just to make contact, but that's a very tough pitch to lay off. So here's Reddick. Reddick takes a fastball high. 269, 14 overs, 29 runs batted in for Reddick, and he is two for nine in this series. He has struck out four times in the series. Shelly Davis, the A's hitting coach, talking to several of his players, including Josh Reddick, about driving the ball. And as he said, when you drive the ball, you get a pitch outside, you're going to hit it, hit it the outfield, you're driving it. This one could be playable for Beltre near the coach's box. He's got inside retired. Kobe Lewis with a three up, three down inning. On to the second, no score.
at the Collison Box Office. Purchase an A's ticket at a regular price. Show your Chevron credit card and get a second ticket of equal value free. Go to chevroncars.com to learn more and apply. Seats subject to availability. Some restrictions apply. This offer is administered by Chevron. So you're telling me that's all I have to do is that's call it. up my Chevron card and say, look, I have a Chevron card. Buy one, get one. Oh, it's not bad. It's a great deal. Something to think about. Young Cruz and Murphy here in the second inning. Cologne had a couple of strikeouts in the first, gave up a two out single to Hamilton, nothing else. That Michael Young opening up and the pitch was on the outside corner. He can open up. Michael Young can and still shoot a ball to right field. Like that. Yeah. Think of the great Roberto Clemente. I had a, actually was honored that uh, he was in the same All Star game and just standing behind the plate and watching his swing. Unbelievable how the, the plate coverage that he had, the way he opened up and he said, no way he can reach the outside part of the plate and all of a sudden bullets right field. Huh. Right up the middle, and Pennington gets a glove on it. Juggles was not going to be able to get Young anyway. So Michael Young with a leadoff single. Now Bartolo just threw his glove at it, tried to backhand the ball, and left Pennington, although he did drop the ball, but when you range that far, you catch the ball. The only thing that you can do is throw off balance and make a bad throw. So Probably the best thing to happen to him was to drop the ball. So Cruz steps in. Nelson Cruz one for six in this series. Cruz with eight home runs and 36 RBIs. The 36 RBIs ninth most in the American League. He's also fourth in the league in strikeouts with 63. So that's what you get with Nelson Cruz. Very much a power hitter, will knock in a lot of runs, and he will strike out a lot. That one in for strike, Cologne took a little bit off. You know, one thing about Scott Berry, we have seen already in this game how he likes the high strike. That can be good if you make a mistake and leave the ball up, but it's bad because those fastballs usually don't move that much that are up in the zone. If they're straight, they become hittable. I always think it's great that pitchers go to the mound. They know who the home plate umpire is, and Adam Roden, the A's video coordinator, has a list of the umpires for each series, who they, what they look like, kind of tendencies, and. A lot of it has to do with the strike zone and very important for a pitcher to know and the catcher to know. Because every umpire seems to be different as far as the strike zone. Adam Rowan could do it all. I mean, he's. He's about as hard a worker there is in putting together. All the information scouting reports and. And not just for the players pitchers and position players umpires as well. One two pitch. Little broken bat, flip toward right field. Reddick got the move, goes into a dive, and he caught it. So a nice play by Reddick in right field for out number one. Well, he's got a strong arm and got a great jump on a ball and had to leave his feet to make sure he got to it and caught it. You have to respect the power of Nelson Cruz playing deep, all out headlong dive in it. Face plant right into this great turf. No, it didn't quite make his face. Just his thumb. Hey, almost looked like Ricky going in on his airplane slide head first in the second. Especially you can see it in Exmo. So here's Murphy. 261 for Murphy with five home runs, 17 RBIs. Murphy saying that he and Brandon Moss were together in the Boston organization, came up together. So he was happy, got a text from Brandon Moss last night that he was going to be joining the club. 
So I'm sure there'll be a little bit of a conversation yeah. if uh, Murph happens to get to first base. Prefer they talk off the field. That means he doesn't get on base. It's a good player. He's like the three and a half outfielder. That's right. <laughs> He's almost a regular, but not quite. Well, Mike Napoli was saying basically a a right-handed pitcher. He's going to be behind the plate, left-handed. Tori Albert catches and he plays first. And the same. And Chris Gentry in center last night. Hamilton left. So Murphy tonight. Basically, what that says is Ron Washington has a pretty good bench, out of uh, interchangeable parts that he could play. Pretty much everybody on the bench on the team, position-wise, and they all contribute. Well, it's important to be able to give your regulars time off. It's right. certainly you got to take into consideration where the Rangers play as well. Very hot weather in Arlington. That's exactly what Mike Napoli said with the heat. And of course, from his standpoint, being a catcher and first baseman, can alternate. Get a breather when he plays first. Main thing, he's got to keep his bat in the lineup. More than the first tonight, Tori Alba sets. He was in the catching position last night. Murphy, good swing, fouls it straight back. So three and two. Michael Young at first, see if he takes off. One out. On deck is Mike Napoli. Outfield shading Murphy towards left field as he kind of has the open stance, but as the ball approaches, he opens up and slaps the ball to left field. Not going, and this one's flipped foul. So a lot of pitches early on for Cologne. He's thrown 33. Thing with Cologne though is he has the ability to have a couple quick innings mm -hmm. with a few pitches because he throws so many strikes. But you got to make quality strikes to this Rangers lineup. And that one's low when he walked it. Two on, one out for Napoli. That's just the 13th walk that Cologne has issued. And he's done that in 76 innings. So Napoli, an RBI opportunity. All 13 walks to left handed hitters. Interesting note. First pitch, Cologne turns it over, drops in for a strike. So it's on one to Napoli, hitting 256 with 10 homers, 28 RBIs. Home run number 10 came on Monday night. Got three games, Bartolo Cologne's been double figures in ground ball outs, including his last start against the Kansas City Royals, 12 ground ball outs. And yes, when he gets runners on base, that's what he's looking for. And to hit on top of a Good moving fastball, beat the ball in the ground, and get a double play. A one pitch is hit right field side and foul well into the seat. So 0 and 2. Young let off the inning with a base hit. Cruz was robbed of hit by Reddick, and then the Murphy walk to put two on one out. Mitch Moreland, another left handed hitter, waits in the on deck circle. Fastball runs high. You do not see Cologne miss that far out of the strike zone very often. We also know that he is not a believer in throwing the waste pitch. If it's 0 2, you may see a good pitch to hit from Cologne. Well, and that's. Indicative of his percentage of fastballs that he throws. It's, it's really hard to waste a fastball. That time he just got to hump up and throw a little bit extra hard. 
which he is capable of doing. Napoli, base hit left field. Here comes Michael Young. They're going to hold him up. Sespin is guns it back in. So Dave Anderson, the third base coach, did the right thing. He held up Michael Young. So the bases are loaded, one out for Moreland. And again, the pitcher was elevated to Mike Napoli. And he hits the line ball the opposite field. And here's just the respect the third base coach has for the arm strength of Cespedes. You know, a little bit offline, but immediately Michael Young running. And Dave Anderson coming down the line, holding him up. So there's been a debate about where do you want your strongest arms? Right field, center field, left field? Well, a lot of cases it's left and right. And Center field, I figure guy's going to score anyway, but in left field, you don't want him to score from second base. And that's why you want the good arm, which the A's have in Cespedes. First pitch to Moreland, fastball inside corner strike. Pennington, the shortstop, is playing right behind second base. If the ball was hit to inch, Pennington would be the pivot man on a double play. Moreland bounces one toward Weeks. He's got it. Flips to second for one. Back to first. Double play. Cologne gets the big double play, and the Rangers do not score. So 4 6 3. Keep Texas off the board. Lowe's. Visit MLB.com forward slash fan guide for a chance to win a VIP experience for two this year at a Major League Baseball World Series game. It's presented by Scott's, the official lawn care company. No score, bottom of the second inning. Bartolo Colon works out of the bases loaded one out jam in the top of the second. Well, that time with Weeks playing deep and really a strong feed over to Pennington. Fortunately, Pennington, a strong arm, able to complete the double play. Cespedes on the first pitch, rips one headed for the left field corner. Cespedes will dig into second with a double. See ball, hit ball, hang him a slider, and he'll crush it. Colby Lewis with the first pitch offering. He did not wait around, and there's your hanging slider, and there's the crushed ball down the corner. Cespedes, bat speed, and boy, his hand is not bothering him at all. He said, hands okay, his knees okay, his head's okay, and he likes playing baseball. And he's like having it. He's a talent. So his fourth hit in the series.
couple of doubles and a home run. My eight pitch first inning for Kobe Lewis and fly ball, ground ball, and strikeout, hanging slider to Cespedes, base hit. That would roll just foul. Well, Mitch Moreland to Jamal Wiggs. And then a long flip to Coco Crisp, underhanded as he did, and a bang bang play at first base. Nice stretch by Moss and Bartolo Colon, a happy young man. He says, I'm always happy when I pitch. Even happier when he gets defense, which he did with Reddick and a double play. 1 1 to Seth Smith. Well, right after Moreland hit the ball, he slipped coming out of the box, and that certainly. Help the A's yeah. chances of getting him at first. I think Bartolo is expecting a big inning because normally he doesn't put any kind of a sweatshirt or jacket on. He's kind of sitting casually like it's going to be a long half inning because normally he's the top step ready to go back to the mound. The two pitches popped up. Foul territory right in front of the Rangers dugout. It's going to be the first baseman Mitch Moreland who makes the catch. Well, he tried his best to pull the ball, and he did, but unfortunately, in the foul territory here at the Coliseum, the ball stayed in play. And no chance for Cespedes to advance to third. So that'll bring up Brandon Hinge. 191 with six homers, 23 RBIs for Hinge. I think Brandon likes to see one of those hanging sliders as well. Watches this one down the left field line, but it's well foul. Plenty of distance. It'd be nice if he had a two run home run. He's just hitting three run homers in grand slams. Yeah. It's terrible. Isn't it? <laughs> He's got 21 RBIs in 18 games with the Athletics. The other two RBIs just came with the Tigers. Drops in for a strike with a breaking ball. The hanging curveball from Scott Feldman on Monday night. NDA's an early 3 to nothing lead. So three three run home runs. That's nine ribbies and two grand slams, eight more. There's 17 and his 21. Just in those five home runs. Behind in the count here, 0 2 with Brandon Moss waiting in the on deck circle. Only Urban Santana has allowed more home runs. That breaking ball stays high. Well, he's up and ready, right? Just like you said. <laughs> There's one out. <laughs> as soon as the first <laughs> out is made. <laughs> Derek Holland got the win last night. Was not real sharp, but he worked his way around some jams and have enough runs. That was lofted into left center field. That's a base hit. Here comes Cespedes. The throw home by Hamilton is late. Cespedes sliding home with the game's first run. One nothing is. Now Cespedes, once he saw the ball was going to drop, he accelerated. What tremendous speed he has, and Hamilton, a very good outfielder, a strong throw. There's a hanging slider, just a simple base hit, though. But a two strike hit by Brandon Edge. Nice extension on his swing, and well, Cespedes. There's your five to a play. So here's Brandon Moss, first at bat as an athletic. And it's in first try. Cespedes so had a slider, so did Brandon Edge, and Kobe Lewis continues to throw the slider, but he's elevating them a little bit too much. So 
one and one the count to Moss. Moss signed a minor league contract in November this past offseason with the Athletics. Was in spring training with the A's. Big league camp. He's having a terrific season for the Rivercats. 286 with 15 home runs and 33 RBIs. He did all that in 51 games. Yellow Cespedes making the turn left foot, which is perfect because it shortens. Shortens the turn around the back. Ideally, you hit the left and you can cross over with the right, and that's the best way to do it. But it's like those kids that ride racing motorcycles where they're yeah. actually laying down on the, the side. Knee almost hits the yeah. So two and two to Brandon Moss. Moss is 28 years old. He'll be 29 in September. Shoots one towards short. Andrus gets the out at second. Back to first. Not in time. Moss beats the throw back to first. So fielder's choice for Brandon Moss. That is going to be tough. Tough to turn two. Kind of an inside-out swing and. Moss got out of the box very quickly. Andrews had to go to his right, shuttle the ball underneath to Kinsler, and he had the quick turn. But actually, Moss got out of the box very quickly. And hard, he has a speed to the board with a double play. So Moss at first now with two outs, and Kurt Suzuki steps in. Pitch to Kurt is low. 214 with no homers, 15 RBIs for Suzuki. Good series, three hits with a couple of doubles so far. And Kurt lifts one to shallow right field. Cruz coming in. He's got it side retired. Suspect is a double engine RBI single. The A's are on the board. They lead one nothing after two. Is brought to you by Pacquiao versus Bradley. Don't miss Pacquiao versus Bradley live this Saturday on pay per view. Gonna watch it uh, in Arizona. We'll probably be at the Diamondback game. Yeah. Is that an hour market contest that we can watch on the so. computer? I think pay for pay per view would prefer that everybody <laughs> watch it. Manny Pacquiao. One nothing. The A's lead. It's the top of the third inning. And the top of the order for Texas is Kinsler takes the strike. He struck out looking in the first inning. 
Kinsler keeps looking back. Maybe Scott Berry, he did it in the first inning when Tolo threw the pitch to the outside part of the plate. Well, if you don't get it in, that's what can happen. And that's two seamer that did not get inside. So that is hit number four off Cologne. Suzuki inside his ball left towards the middle of the plate. And well, Kurt had to reach back. Unfortunately, the ball stayed too much in the middle of the plate, and the result is a base hit up the middle. Well, Cologne will give up some hits now. He's now given up 90, and that's the most in the American League. But I don't think that bothers him a whole lot. Does anything bother him? Well, that's true. Not much. Quick throw. Kinsler gets back. The Rangers lead the league in runs scored. They have scored 309 runs this year. Kinsler runs in. There's a shot up the middle, right to Pennington. Steps on the back, throws the first double play. Nice throw. Well, it could not have worked any better for the Athletics. The ball was hit right to Pennington as he was moving toward the bag. Covering the bag on a potential throw from Kurt Suzuki. Instead, it's a ground ball right on the bag. And Elvis Anders trying to go to the right side with the base hit, but Pennington, well, you couldn't have received a throw more perfectly than that hit ball. That would toward left field, long run for Cespedes, still on the move, and he goes into a slide, and he caught it! <laughs> Sensational play by Ioannis Cespedes, sliding, heading into foul territory, <laughs> and we like it. <laughs> We like it a lot. That's some speed, folks. Some talent. Five tool all the way. Wow. The third inning. Well, they four plays of the year. Four pitch inning. Good acceleration again. The speed and slide, and then popped up with the ball in the glove. What a tremendous play by Cespedes. So doing it all tonight, showing his speed and the hit and run that turned into a double play in a four pitch inning. Colby Lewis hardly got a chance to sit down and have a sip of water, and he's back on the mound. That ball would have been a fair ball, or yeah. it was a fair ball. You see where he caught it and where it would have landed if he had not caught it. One and two to Pennington, who will be followed by Weeks and Chris. Now watch where he is when the ball goes in his gloves. See, that's a fair ball. He's
see the ball hop up. His webbing, the webbing of his glove was on the ground. The ball hit the webbing and popped in to the pocket. Watch the ball, right? Sit. Hit his, Sit. Hit his leg. <laughs> Actually, the thumb of his glove. <laughs> That's that glove is long. Outfielders are allowed to use a very big glove, long glove, unlike an infielder. Two two pitch to Pennington. Dribbles one out in front. Napoli picks it up, and it's a fair ball. Guns it to first. Pennington's out. So I, we think that this ball hit Cespedes leg. Watch. It is a catch, though. Yep, it hits right on the inside of the right knee into the glove. Now batting second baseman number 19. That makes it even better. Yeah. <laughs> But I like the little pop up after he made the catch. The pop up to his feet, the little back turn, and head back to the dugout. Paul Emmel saw just enough to put up the right hand. Showed it a fair ball. Leg is not part of the ground. No. Nope. Part of the body to make the catch. Right. <laughs> so. Jamal Weeks. Bounced out in the first inning to Beltre at third. So assessment is double in single. That's how the A's got the run in the second inning. Shot. Coco Chris will be next. Infield and outfield straight away for Jabal Weeks. And he rips this one towards center. Hamilton gets back. Still going back. And in stride, he makes the catch. The yeah, second fireworks show of the season is on Friday, June the 15th. The show presented by the Oakland Tribune and Contra Costa Times begins after the A's play the Padres here at the Coliseum. Bring the family and the picnic blankets and enjoy the show from the outfield grass. On field capacity is limited. For tickets and information, go to OaklandAthletics.com slash fireworks. Padres, of course, the A's will be in Arizona this weekend on to Colorado. And then the remainder. Of the interleague games will be played here against the Padres, the Dodgers, and the Giants. Well, if we're going to play interleague, whether you like it or not, it's here to stay. Then I'm okay with the National League West, close to home, right? See, I thought when they started interleague play, if they just left them in their own division, yeah. they'd be great because the whole idea is cut down on travel. And what's the sense of going across the country to play the Eastern Division or even the Central? Well, that would be that would be all right. I mean, Phoenix, oh, yeah. nice town, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the, the National League cities, National League West, exactly. Good cities. Yeah. Cruz coming in, and he's under it, and he's got it side retired. So a three up, three down inning for Colby Lewis, and we are moving to the fourth. He's with a one nothing lead.
Athletics with KC Pratt. Follow KC on Twitter at KC Pratt CSN. Log on to A's Talk on CSNCalifornia.com. All season long, read Casey's news and notes on the Open Athletics. It's a tweet machine, man. <laughs> oh, I can't keep up with it. No, it's tonight. He's not in his uh, normal shirt and tie and jacket. He's got his Comcast Sportsnet jacket. Yeah, which is cool. Cool and casual. But he's doing a terrific job, so check him out. Beltray Young and Cruz here in the fourth inning. Fastball up and out over the plate. Beltray took a big swing. 0 and 2. Adrian Beltray confirmed a couple of things tonight. Number one, the helmet is because his regular helmet had an accident, as he said. <laughs> okay. It had an accident, so he got one that he likes to have it tight. Pulled down the way hit that one is. And as he said, so he could focus on the pitcher by having the bill down low and his eyes just looking out underneath the bill. Plus, he's wearing glasses. He said the wind is the worst here. And we, we talked last night about the the glasses. And no, he's they're not subscription. They're just clear glass because he said the wind affects it. Well, and like you said, the last two nights it's been even. Yeah. It'll be a little breezy here at night, but Monday and Tuesday was breezier than most nights. Nelson Cruz doing the same thing. Elvis Andrews, the guys who've been wearing it, and slight breeze tonight. But you're right. And remember, Mark McGuire just he, he squint all the time. He wore contacts and huh. was constantly trying to squint. His eyes were watering. He had to step out and and you know Cespedes has been doing that the last couple of games where he stepped out and wiping his eyes. And I don't know if his eyes are watering as well from the wind. Whatever he's doing, keep doing it because he's swinging the bat well. One and two to Young, who had a base hit in the second inning. One of four hits the Rangers have against Cologne. Young goes after that sinker from Cologne. When we talk about his opposite field, look where. Coco's playing the distance where you have. He hits the ball here more times than not, and so they're giving him that whole space to left field, left center. But Michael Young, one of the best inside out swings in baseball. And the A's are playing in the court, especially Reddick in right field. Well, he stands a long ways from the play, dives into the ball a little bit, but not a lot. Suspicious, the left fielder, has shifted over to his left. Fair amount as well. And Bartolo Colon is good enough to pitch to the positioning of the outfielders. Infield straight up all the way, figured he's on the ground and could go to any one of the infielders, but outfield, if it's hit that way, figured the right field. And that one lofted toward right, but Reddick is there. He's got it. And that's out number two. So Reddick playing fairly shallow, so he had an easy play. And Nelson Cruz will hit. Nelson Cruz. This guy you play on the warning track. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the Angels have an early lead over the Mariners down in Anaheim. It's four to two Angels in the fourth inning. It's Noisy and Williams, the pitching matchup. Jerome Williams is six and two for the Angels. And that's the rubber game of that three game series. So Angels four, Mariners two, top of the fourth inning. Kendrys Morales has a two run homer. That oh, just to our right. We don't get him up here very often, but that one headed right next to it. Eric Nadell, the Rangers Hall of Famer, and of course, Steve Busby, author of a couple of no hitters. Well, he's right next yeah, to us. Yeah, I he, mean, Eric Nadell got it. That, there that's it. He's on the Pelota. He's got the baseball right there. So if it's two feet the other way, Grady Lieber, our fine stage manager, reaches up, makes the catch, puts it in his pocket. 
Now, you know what I've been done? I've been reaching over, picking him up off the floor, yeah, putting him back, in, you been back in his seat. Not been underneath. <laughs> I have no problem in it. Yeah, we don't get many up this direction, so you're right. I, Eric Nadell, I'd like to have seen his face as the ball was approaching him. Ah! Well, you're just not ready for it. It doesn't happen. Cologne gets Cruz swing. That is strikeout number three. And it's a very nice three up, three down inning for Portolo Cologne. Josh Reddick and his 14 home runs will lead things off when we come back. Question, log on to CSNCalifornia.com to post your question. Dale from Sonora asked, at the end of the year, who will lead the A's in home runs and RBIs? Um, right now, Reddick leads in both categories. But I'm going to say that Reddick will lead in home runs and Cespedes will lead in RBIs. Just for conversation purposes, that's my call. And ends the most RBIs with the fewest number of games. Reddick is going to find the right field corner. Reddick hits the bag at first. He's digging for two, and he'll stop there with a leadoff double. So the A's right back at it again here in the bottom of the fourth. And again, respecting the arm strength of Nelson Cruz in right field, satisfied with the double, trying to go inside. And left the fastball right. towards the middle of the plate, left and once fielder. again up. And Josh Reddick, nice swing and a fastball down the right field corner. And that's all on his own as he decided to hold up. Nice and Bruce and not having a problem getting to the ball. You know, you have a The last thing on his mind is hitting the ball to the right side to advance Reddick to third base. Well, he's got to get me an RBI. Exactly. And I think he's going to do it maybe two with one swing. Well, the right side. Accident. Check swing. Ideally, you'll see and surprising to see Elvis Andrus up the middle. Trying to keep Reddick close. Huge hole on the left side. But ideally, if you want to prevent a hitter from hitting ball on the right side, you pitch him in. They're actually shading Sespin is to hit the ball to the right side, landing that direction. And he hits this one in the hole. Anders can't get it. That's your RBI. That's right. As Reddick digs home, he scores. Sespin has two hits. Now he's got an RBI, and the A's lead two to nothing. And why, for the life of me, Ellis Anders was the one trying to keep Reddick close? It's amazing because Ellis Sespin he put a charge into the ball and. Andrews tried to dive, but the ball got past him so quickly. They're going to go inside, and you got the defense shading the opposite direction. Look where Andrews is, tries to get back. That ball just shot through the infield. And Murphy had no chance. Once Reddick was going on contact, and Mike Gaig was sending him. 
But that's just the power of Cespedes. That ground ball. I mean, usually a guy is able to knock the ball down, but it just got past Elvis Andrews so quickly. Well, Cespedes gets his 26th RBI. You see what I'm talking? The fastball location inside. Yet is that where the catcher was set up? That's where Napoli set up. Oh, okay. With the I fastball. thought he set up outside. No, he set up okay. inside, and, and that was a surprising thing. Yeah. Because with the defense shading him to the right side, especially Elvis Andrews, open up the entire left side of the infield. He's yeah, you're not going to set up your defense for a guy to get jammed. Exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. Or a check swing, which he did on the first pitch. But it's just a very interesting setup. Big chopper toward Beltre. He's got it to Kinsler for one on the first. And a double play. Moreland dug it out. And what looked like a very close play at first base. Jerry Meals calls Smith out. So it goes as a 5 4 3 double play. Kensler a long way from second, so Beltre had to range to his left and just shuttle pass over to second base and Kinsler on the move. That's why the throw was in the dirt. Yeah, I think that ball might have been in the dirt. Seth Smith, let's see if his foot's on the bag. Bang, bang. Nope, he jumped. Good call. Yep. Yep. Is he jumped? Airborne, the ball jumped in the glove of Morton. So Jerry Mills, like he got it right. Give him credit for that. Swing and a miss by him. So 0 oh 2. Inch had the RBI single in the second inning. Drive to right center, but in the ballpark as Cruz gets back in under it. Side retired. Reddick a double. Sussman is a single. Another run for the A's. They lead 2 0 after four. Who was the last A's position player to pitch in a game? Monday night, Craig Gentry pitched an inning for the Rangers. Gave up a couple of runs, but actually looked up. It's the fourth position player in Rangers history to pitch in a game. I was talking to Rod Washington, and I said, Wash, you know, it seemed like what you did Monday night. Helped you last night. Maybe, yeah. And he said yes, and he said, I hated to do it. But he said, sometimes you have to. And in the case of that game, and Jeffrey pitched in the ninth inning, it was 12 to nothing. Pitching the eighth inning, that is. Scored a run in the ninth at the Rangers. 
David Murphy is retired. Coco takes care of the fly ball. Come to the Coliseum Sunday, June 17th. It's Father's Day. What a day to spend at the Coliseum. That's when the A's host the Padres and get your very own A's Chia Pet Coco Crisp. See Coco still at the ballpark, then watch him sprout on your windowsill. 10,000 fans will take home this unique replica island courtesy of Chevron Extra Mile. For more information and tickets, go to OaklandAthletics.com slash Coco. I still prefer to see the high cooling on the windowsill. Well, yeah. But, you know, we can find a Coco Chia Pet. You can have them both there. Sprouting along with the rhubarb pie right. cooling on the windowsill. Sounds huh? like a Norman Rockwell to me. <laughs> Up the middle, and Napoli has his second hit. You ever like, yeah, man, rhubarb pie? Yeah. You like it, don't you? Yeah, I love it. Especially when it's cooling on the windowsill. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> My favorite time, going out and picking up bales of hay walking along, but knowing oh, there was a rhubarb yeah, pie waiting see. at the end of the day. Tell me about it. <laughs> you did a little up, right? Yes, I did. Dad had you out baling hay, picking up hay bales. Yeah. And it had to be a, the sun had to be out because the hay had to be dry, that's right. which made it hot. And you definitely didn't want it wet. No, no. because break your back trying to pick that's it up. Right. That's why you got so strong. Yeah. Right. Six back abs. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Morland. Well, there is a saying that covers many different things: make hay when the sun shines. Yeah. One and zero to Moreland, who hit into a four-six-three double play to end the second inning. Swing and a miss. It's Cologne. No, he's necessarily taken anything off the pitch, but he's really turning it over and has very good downward action. Struck out uh, Cruz last inning. Yeah. The end the inning was that two seamer. Actually, an off speed about 85, 87 miles per hour. I just thought if you are a right handed pitcher and you strike out a right handed hitter with a sinking fastball, it's hard to do. And the ball has to have major sink on it to get a guy to swing over top. Well, we'll see Brad Zick with this weekend. Zick like to drop down that submarine and throw. Two seamers inside the right handers get ground balls. And the only question would they hit him to the third baseman shortstop? And that's what you have to be concerned about because you, you got to open up. The hitter's going to open up. And if he hits the ball hard to the left side, it might make it through. Boss has it. Throws and they get the out at second, and Moreland's going to be safe at first. So we're not surprised that Bartola Cologne has the highest percentage of fastball thrown, 88%. What we're surprised is look at number two, Kyle Drabeck. 40. <laughs> yeah, 26 no, points that's different. Number five. That's amazing. amazing. That is amazing. And then Jerome Williams down to 50%. So it's really like ridiculous how many fastballs he throws. Well, remember the game in San Francisco? Struck out Belt and uh, Pagan on the fastballs inside. The bases loaded. Brian Samian said, all he does is throw fastball. And I said, but yeah, look at the location. And exactly what he said. Excellent location with his fastball. And granted, he's going to make some mistakes. He's going to give up the long ball. But the amount of movement that he can get on his fastball is just remarkable. Loss with a nice play to keep Moreland from probably standing on third base. That's what you call a diamond across in front for the runner. Actually, a lot of times the runner will get in the way. Now the ball to get by. Kinsler has a strikeout and a single in the game. Checks his swing and a pitch that was inside. No swing, says Jerry Nichols. This will be pitch number 74, Cologne. Bounce toward Inj at third. 
They'll go the short way to Weeks. Side retired. So a runner left for the Rangers. Bottom of the fifth coming up. A's two. Texas nothing. to pitch in a game. Got to go to Coors Field for that one. Frank Menachino, July 18th, 2000. Frankie had one inning pitch, six hits, four earned runs. Not good. I can still see Frankie. It, it was the funniest thing. He, he said, if I could have just stood on the back of the mound, ran up the hill, took a little crow hopper, and I'd been all right. But standing on top and winding up, I had no clue. Couldn't do it. It was funny. Well, that was a long day. Oh. Did Day he, night, did he pitch in the first game first of the doubleheader? <laughs> yeah. Put ice on his shoulder and rest in the second. No, that, that, that was a day night doubleheader. The only good part about that was eating between games one and two. Well, we don't want any of that no. to happen on our trip to Denver next week, which be there with an off day in the mile ice. We don't want any snow either. We'll be all right. Two and two to Brandon Moss. Moss has been in the big leagues with the Red Sox, the Pirates, and the Phillies. Time last year with the Phillies. He skies this one to shallow center. And there's a little bit of a collision. And when it's all said, Ned Hamilton is going to make the catch after Kinsler and Andrus brushed up against each other. So that's out number one here at the bottom of the fifth. It's that time of day. It's not really Probably. full night yet. The catcher, the ball may be a little difficult to see. Hit a ball to Nelson Cruz. He had a tough time finding one that Kila Kahui hit the other night. Deep all of us. So here's Suzuki. Five hits for Texas, four hits for the Athletics. Kurt checks his swing, rolls it foul. Angels still leading the Mariners four to two in the fifth inning. And Andrus leaps up and makes the catch. Kind of uh, off the end of the bat line drive, and Andrus timed his leap perfectly. So Suzuki's 0 for 2, and that'll bring up Pennington. Now that timing it perfectly a little bit awkward, but jumped and got about what, a couple of inches off the ground. That's always tough. Hey, it'll try to go up and hang, which he did, and made a nice play. 
fell to the ground like he was falling off. Second story buildings. You're only about a foot. So here's Pennington who. Did a little dribbler out in front of the plate that Napoli grabbed. Threw him out. So 0 and 2. Fastball runs high. Pennington with a base hit drops it into center field. A great two strike hitting get a slow curveball from Kobe Lewis. Nice tilt to it, but Pennington right. stayed on it, took it right back up the middle. Right over the top and curveball down a little bit. Pennington a nice swing. See a whole bunch of those. So hit number five for the A's, and that'll bring up Weeks. Fastball, a strike two Weeks, who is 0 for two. Yeah, Mike Napoli pointing over to the dugout. Of course, a lot of times that. You want to hear somebody yell there he goes with the left handed hitter you really can't see the runner first and this is a running opportunity for the A's. With Cliff Pennington. Lead off hitter Jamal Weeks but. Sometimes a hitter will block the catcher and he can't see peripherally whether he's going to be running or not and he needs to hear somebody to yell. So it can come out quickly from behind the plate. Pennington has seven steals this year. He's seven for nine. The A's third in the American League in stolen bases. They have 44. Not as many as of late, though. They haven't been getting as many runners on base the last couple weeks. With fewer opportunities to steal. They led the American League in steals for the first six weeks of the season. And some of the guys that were still in bases now aren't surprising opposing teams. That's true. You know, so they're paying a little bit more attention to pretty much everybody gets on base. Pennington on the move. That one hit to shallow left center. Hamilton tracks it down. Side retired. A's have a hit and a runner left. So we're through five from the O.Co Coliseum. Two nothing A's.
by NASCAR Racing in Sonoma. The Toyota Save Mart 350 returns to the Sonoma Valley Road course June 22nd through the 24th. For tickets, call 1-800-870-RACE. Number one, Elvis Andrews. A beautiful look at the beautiful Bay Area. The Rangers like the Bay Area because they're here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Whether they like it or not. Day game tomorrow for the Rangers and the A's. And then Texas plays at San Francisco this weekend. And of course, the A's head to Arizona. Swing and a miss by Anderson. Pitch that was running in on the hands. So the A's daughters taking batting practice this afternoon yeah. after the. Guys, were uh, the regulars were hitting. And Tommy Malone, it's Fry, so he probably He's the guy. You get two starts. He's the two start guy. Big chopper inch charges. He's got it. Quick release and the throw, and it kept Moss's foot on the bag. He somehow kept his foot there. So Andrus is called out. He has a few words for Jerry Meals. The A's will take it. Well, Brandon, Ian knew he had to get rid of it quickly because Andrus was out of the box very quickly. And oh, as he was running, Brandon with the ball hit slowly and well, Moss as Andrus pointed back, but I don't think Brandon Inge got very good grip on the ball. Ains may have got a break. First pitch to Hamilton on the inside quarter first time. See how balls in the glove, foots on the bag, or off. Oh yeah, close. Off the bag. Close enough. <laughs> it's the last night too, right? Similar play. And now they're going inside with Josh Hamilton. A couple of fastballs inside, shaking his head a little bit. First at bat stayed away. Second at bat, great play by Sespinus in left field. Diving, sliding catch. That one foul back. Hamilton said today he will not participate in the home run derby. Well, you may say, well, come on, we got to have it. But he, because he had the great 2008 home run derby at Yankee Stadium, but he has not participated since then. 28 and one round. Yeah, exactly. So he put on a terrific show, but it's not like he's been doing it every year. That went up the middle. Pennington on the move. Throws in time. Two outs. Last night, how about the Ford right choice of last night, Sean Doolittle? Playing a violin. He gets a sign. 21 fastballs. And he struck out Nelson Cruz. He struck out Mike Napoli. Guess what? He struck out Tori Alba. Three strikeouts, the four batters he faced in his major league debut, Sean Doolittle. Seven Scribner next to him, just called up. Scribner taking the spot of Andrew Kerrigan, and we wish him well considering what happened to him. But Sean Doolittle, Nick Stein, nice guy to strike out three, first three batters. But if he was nervous, like he said, he didn't show it. Especially with his fastball. That's a pretty good forward right choice. You can rear back and throw fastballs to a fastball hitting team and throw it by them. That's a fair ball. Inge has it. Long throw and Moss takes it out. Beltre's retired. Busy inning for the first baseman, Brandon Moss, and he handles it. No problem. Well, a little bit longer throw this time for Brandon Lange, but on the other side, and helped him out.
Coors Light Freeze Can. Coors Light Freeze Cam is brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. It's the world's most refreshing beer. Bottom of the sixth inning. Coco Crisp leading it off. Crisp, Reddick, and Cespedes. The Mariners have tied it out in Anaheim. Kyle Seeger with a two run double. It's 4 4 going to the bottom of the fifth inning. It's the only other game still going on in the American League. And Coco now one and two. He's got a strikeout and a fly ball to right field so far. In the game. After that high fastball, you see Napoli set up for the high fastball, and Lewis threw it right where he wanted it. Kind of figured out. What? You saw Sean Doolittle with his setup. He had the glove under his chin like he's playing the violin. Uh huh. Check out Coco Crisp. You know, he has his chin laying on his shoulder. Yeah. He's also playing the violin. So we've got a couple of violin players. <laughs> See, that's what makes my partner a great, <laughs> great color analyst. I mean, just see, see, shooting. Shooting. <laughs> Playing the flute. Yeah. That a boy shooting. Shooting's a flute player, all right. Chopper toward Anders, who charges, and he flips it to first, and Crisp is out. But see, shooting is very stupid because he, he had been watching Coco, and he's, what he's saying to him right here is that. When you were throwing, when you were hitting well, your hands were doing that. That's what your hands were doing. And he said, now I'm not seeing that. He's trying to see the top end. Right you know, they were really moving last year, the year before. And of course, Coco Chris, when he's got those fingers going, he's going great. And Shooty noticed that. Shooty is he's right on top of his game. So, violinist, flute. Oh. Reddick, the bunt, pulls the bat back. It's called a strike. Hayes with a single run in the second and a single run in the fourth for the 2 nothing lead. So a great note on Colby Lewis. And we both know this, but it's still interesting. In 2010 and 2011, he faced the A's in all 12 series that these two teams played. That's right. Six. Unbelievable. That's right. Three and three, home and away each season. And, of course, came back to Japan, signed the contract with the Rangers. And, you know, it's, the A's, of course, and he's had a lot of success against the A's yeah. in those 12 starts. A start in every series. But the one guy the A's did not want to face, and they've been pretty North this year and Felix Hernandez playing the Mariners three and three, six series each year. I was concerned about facing somebody of his caliber. Reddick on the ground, hit hard, but right at Moreland. Do you think in the Eastern Division, teams possibly have to face CC Sabathia sure. six times a year? Or the Rays' great pitching staff. I mean, there's some there's some good ones that. And you know that you're facing teams you own your vision. Yeah. You've, you've got a tough goal. Well, you can't avoid it. Yeah. So, Kobe Lewis did not face the A's in that first series this year, but remember that was just a two games. One guy. 4 0 last year, 7 and 3 against the A's in his career. He has not figured out Yohannes Cespedes, a double and a run scored in the second, an RBI single in the fourth. Now with nobody on base, Elvis Andrus playing him straight up, and the ground ball that Cespedes hit, last at bat would have been right at Andrus where he's playing now. But with Cespedes, when he swings and makes contact, 
ball that jumps off his bat and it gets through an infield quickly as the Rangers found out. Swing wildly at the breaking ball, so it's one and two. He opened up and the slider a good one outside. So he goes for a little walk. Pitch number 77 coming and that one's drilled the right field. Cruz coming in, he dives, he can't get it. All the way to the wall. Cespedes hits the bag at second. He's digging for third and he's going to make it standing up. So it'll be a triple for Ioannis Cespedes. Single, double, triple for Cespedes. And what a thing of beauty to watch him run. Fastball away after a slider fooled him. And Nelson Cruz trying to make a diving catch. And I tell you, if Hamilton doesn't back up, this is an inside the park home run. Cespedes, watch him run. Tremendous speed. Willie Davis to the Dodgers, one of the fastest going from home to third. Look at that. He is just flying. And Hamilton backed up. And had he not gotten over to it quickly, that is an inside the park home run. So here's Seth Smith. Big overhand curve in for a strike. Smith is 0 for 2. Another curveball, and that one. Maybe throw it a little harder. Boy, a lot of break on his curveball, and it's only two. Well, less than two outs. Nelson Cruz probably does not dive for the ball. Two outs, even though he puts a runner in score position, he's hoping his pitcher gets out of the inning. But I think Cruz also might have been fooled. You know, the Rangers seeing Cespedes for the first time, he's on the DL. And the A's were down in Arlington for the two game series. So they're seeing the young talent now, but Cruz is a very good outfielder, but that ball might have started to die quickly on him. They could not get to it. This one hit high to shallow left center. Hamilton's been busy tonight. He's under it. He's got it side retired. So Cespedes, the triple, but he's stranded. Still 2 nothing games. Pounds. Manny, come break down this wall. Bartolo Colon back to work for the seventh inning. He'll face Young, Cruz, and Murphy. First pitch to Michael Young the ball. Colon has allowed five hits. The Rangers have stranded four. And it's 0 2. 
Yeah, one and one. That was pitch number 83 for Cologne. Well, he's been terrific so far. Out to the right side. Weeks charges, gets a nice big hop, and that's out number one. It's a tenth ground ball out, exactly what Bartolo Colon likes to get the ground outs. Now, now with that one. Well, he's retired 12 out of the last 13. So Cruz steps in, he's 0 for 2, and he takes a fastball right there for a strike. Slowly hit, but foul. So what a surprise. Bartolo Colon ahead in the count, 0 and 2. Murphy waits in the on deck circle. Close. Wow. Wonder what Tommy Cam showed with that. One. Maybe just off the plate. Pretty good. Here's Tommy. Check the outside corner. Black. And that one runs way inside, and it's a foul ball, and it's a <laughs> and Suzuki held on. So it's a foul tip. Write it down as a strikeout, yeah. and that's out number two. Foul tip. Two strikes. Suzuki holds on, and that's the slightest. That. That's the slightest foul tip you'll ever get as he tries to avoid being hit, but the bat stays there and just barely nicks it. And Kurt Suzuki, and you won't hear it on the ultra mo, but see if we can see it. Change direction a little bit. You normally hear. Number seven, David Murphy. Oh yes, you see it right there. Yeah, that was great. Ultra Mo, X Mo. So here's David Murphy who takes the strike. Let's listen though. <laughs> Good dude. That's how slight it was. All you heard was a catcher's mitt. Cespedes to his right, under it, side retired. Cologne rolls on. Another three up, three down inning, seventh inning stretch from the Coliseum. Two nothing A's.
make it three hits single double triple he's made a sensational play in the outfield and what does he need for a cycle home run, home run. Yeah. and then Vinny Catronio will be ecstatic yeah, we'll keep an eye on Vinny when Cespedes <laughs> comes back up <laughs> Vinny the anti <laughs> the anti cycle guy he knows it Kobe Lewis has been pretty good tonight but not nearly as good as Bartolo Colon. Well, you mentioned uh, at the beginning of the game, a couple of pitchers give up home runs. Kobe Lewis, as well as Bartolo Colon, neither has given up one tonight. And I think Kobe Lewis getting better. His slider is a little bit sharper, you know, fastball location a little bit better. And Bartolo just keeps rolling along. One and two, the count to Inge will be followed by Brandon Moss and then Kurt Suzuki. And Inge tried to hold up, couldn't do it. So there is that slider. So that's just the second strikeout for Colby Lewis in the game. Our Chevron pitching matchup for the series finale tomorrow afternoon. You Darvish goes for his eighth win of the year. Brandon McCarthy goes for his fifth win. So that's two very good pitchers going at it. It'll be a 12:35 first pitch, radio only. So listen to the game on 95.7 The Game. So the A's after that game will get on the charter and head to Arizona. One, one to Brandon Moss. Bob Melvin talking about Brandon Moss before the game today, and he talked about the fact that Moss had an out clause in his contract that would kick in on the 15th of June, meaning if he was not in the major leagues, if the A's did not call him up to the major leagues by the 15th of June, then he could, if wanted, become a free agent. Mm -hmm. So that may have played into the decision of getting Moss here. Obviously, you haven't. Very good season in Sacramento, but it was part of his contract. What's today? Today sixth. is the sixth of June. Boss is retired, and that's out number two. Speaking of the sixth of June, Ray, I have to wish my father a happy birthday. He's watching back in Racine, Wisconsin. He watches all the games. He's got the MLB TV package. And that's 10 to 11 back there. Well, you know what? He's probably hanging in there. Well, you better go back. You know, come on. It's time now because you got to get up. Yeah. What about it's getting about 4 o'clock? Well, I haven't told you how old he is today either. 87 years old yeah, today. He's a young man. He's doing great. He's healthy. He's sharp. That's why he's getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning <laughs> out on the, on the farm, right? Yeah. That's right. Goes for drive. So happy birthday to my dad, Henry. Yeah, absolutely. He gets a doubleheader on TV just about every day. That's right. He's one of the few that likes both the Bay Area teams. <laughs> he doesn't have a choice. So we're trying to give him a doubleheader sweep today. And he does. They watch both games. He likes that one there in different time zones. That's right. And Absolutely. then he doesn't have to decide. Well, I don't know. Brother Dwayne was on this afternoon. Yeah, they so. had an earlier game in San Diego, so we watched that. Had dinner and got comfortable to watch the A's and the Rangers. Henry, one of these days, the A's will make it to uh, Milwaukee to play the, the Brewers at Miller Park. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> well, these years of interleague play, and as long as Miller Park has been there, the A's have never seen it. Have no clue. County Stadium, I know all about it. But not does. Miller Park. What is Milwaukee all about? Come on, back to work.
Summer of Luck. $500 cash every hour from 2 p.m. until midnight. Visit CashCreek.com. For details, beautiful look at the O.Co. Coliseum. And it's a 2 to nothing A's lead. Oh, yeah. She's hanging in there. She likes the score. A little smile on her face. Cologne and the A's shutting down the Rangers trying to take game two or game three of this four game series. Rosales takes over at first base. So Brandon Moss is done for the night. And the first pitch to Napoli is in first drive. That's a versatility and Bob Melvin talked about Adam Rosales. He's now Matt gets a start, but uh, defensively, Gonzalez goes in. Napoli reaching for it, gets under it. And Cespedes makes the catch, out number one. Now took just in case, and he is the eighth inning guy, but it's all a close. 91 pitches. Flip, flipping the ball in the air. Like, <laughs> you ever see a pitcher do that? Nope. <laughs> he's retired nine in a row. That's why he says every fifth day he's happy man. Yes, he is. It's his happy day. So Moreland hits. There's a strike. The Angels have taken a six to four lead, and scored a pair in the bottom of the fifth inning. Well, that's a back and forth game down in Anaheim. Moreland with a double play ground out, and then he reached out a fielder's choice. And that was a big one, that uh, double play. Right, bases loaded, one out in the second inning. Lead off single, then a fly ball by Cruz, a diving catch by Josh Reddick, and then the double play, 4 6 3. Big swing by Moreland on a high fastball, two and two the count. Top of the order, Ian Kinsler waiting in the on deck circle. A couple of pitches are supposed to be inside. They've kind of run away from Morton that he's fouled off the left side. So we'll have to try to go inside with the two seamer. Staying away again. Strike three call outside corner. Number five for Cologne. Mug Root Beer Float Day is on Wednesday, June 20th at 505 in the Eastside Club. Players, coaches, celebrities, and radio and TV personalities will be serving Mug Root Beer Floats and Orange Crush Floats for just $2 each. Proceeds benefit the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. The admission is free with a game ticket for that evening's game. Mug Root Beer Float Day is presented by Pepsi. Ice cream is donated by drivers. For information and tickets, go to oaklandathletics.com slash rootbeer. That last fastball at 93, four seamer right on the outside corner, and Bartolo Colon just pumped it to the corner for the called strike three. That is what he's capable of doing, especially low pitch count. He can get a little bit extra when he needs it. That went in for a strike, 90 miles an hour with movement, one and one the count. Kinsler one for three, he had a base hit in the third inning, and he was erased on a double play. Shot toward inch. He's got it. Straightens up. Throws in time. Another three up, three down inning for Bartolo Colon. He is rolling. He's retired 11 in a row.
away. Here's our game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealers, Bartolo Colon. He's been the story tonight. Sensational. Eight shutout innings against the highest scoring team in all of baseball, the Texas Rangers. Eight innings, five hits, five strikeouts. He has walked just one. Right at 100 pitches. Ryan Fuentes has started throwing out in the bullpen. There it is. And a good with Kobe Lewis has pitched well also. But Bartolo Colon and now you can go back as you look at the numbers. Colon 100 pitches 77 strikes just 23 balls of the 100. But Baltimore April the 29th exactly the same. Two runs A's had the lead ninth inning Bartolo went out infield hit infield hit plus an E one second and third. Balfour came in. Weeders opposite field double. Walk off by Benjamin. Three run home run, five run inning. So tonight, and in that game, Bartolo Colon said he was ready to go for the ninth inning. Kinsler ranging to his left and throws out Pennington. And this tonight, it was nice going. Give me five. So. As the manager could say, what more could you ask in eight innings out of a pitcher and take a two run lead in the ninth inning, at least a two run? And Brian Flint is trying to close it out. One out for weeks. Big curveball in first strike. In that top of the ninth inning, it'll be Andrus Hamilton. Beltre after Beltre would be young, so it is indeed the heart of the order. Kinsler more action charges quickly flips it to first, and they just got weeks. Time now for the AT&T U-verse reverse replay, and Bartolo Colon pitched very well. But how about this defensive play? Josh Reddick, Nelson Cruz, headlong dive, coming up with it, and style points on top of it. And then Jonas Cespedes, left field, sliding, ball off his right knee into his glove, but a great catch, fair ball, but he caught it. So the great defense in the outfield, great defensive on the infield with the double play turn by Jamal Wicks, Cliff Pennington, the shift played into the game tonight. Coco swings at the first pitch, skies with Jordan Cruz, he's right there. Side retired. So Kobe Lewis has. A three up three down inning and we are headed to the night folks A's trying to shut out the Rangers. on Comcast Sportsnet, California.
is brought to you by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. And by Jack in the Box. Right now at Jack in the Box, you can try the new Chipotle Chicken Club. Make it a combo with fries and a drink. Big night for Ioannis Cespedes. Single, double, triple. He's been right in the middle of all the scoring for the A's. And the Athletics trying to shut out the Texas Rangers. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and smog experts. So the closer comes in, Brian Fuentes. He takes over for Bartolo Colon, who was sensational tonight. So Fuentes will try to get the A's win number 25 on the year. Kobe Lewis was very good as well, but he's right now on the short end. Andrus, Hamilton, and Beltre, two, three, and four for the Rangers. And the first pitch is down and in to Aldis Andrus, who is 0 for 3. A couple of ground outs and a fly ball to center field. Up and away, 2 and 0. Oh. Amazingly for Bartolo Colon, not only. 100 to pitches, 77 strikes, 28 batters, 21 first pitch strikes. So he was dealing right from the beginning of each batter. 2 0 pitch, and yeah, that's a strike on the outside corner. Andrews trying to maybe distract Fuentes by showing butt and pulling the bat back. See where Inch is playing. Even with the bag. Two on pitch and a good swing by Andrus. Fouls it back. Kobe Lewis tonight. Five hits, two runs, no walks, three strikeouts, and he threw 101 pitches, 77 <laughs> strikes. Amazing. Both pitchers, one pitch off the total, same number of strikes. Two two pitch down to Sanders is grounded toward short. Pennington has it. Throws across. Out number one. You look at Bartolo Colon. Five hits. Eight innings of shut on baseball for Bartolo. And what does he do? Huh. Hundred pitches, seventy-seven strikes. One walk, five strikeouts, and strike throwing machine. And you could probably say I could count two changeups he threw. I didn't see any break any slider just fastball so he might have gone 98 percent fastball tonight two percent change it and he was 87 to 91 on oh, every yeah. one of them. the 93 he struck out more than for the last strikeout he bumped it up to 93 and four seamer right on the corner oh one one to Josh Hamilton Swing and a miss good breaking ball from Fuentes. He's thrown him two very good breaking balls and it's 0 and 2. Very good ones in Suzuki outside corner glove on the ground as they drop it here. And throw it to the outside here and does he do it again? Yep. And he does and Hamilton waves at it. Swinging strikeout two outs here in the ninth. Uh, when he see that kind of a swing and Kurt Suzuki has been brilliant when it comes to calling games you watch the hitter he tells you what he's doing what he's looking for and he just stay with the curveball Suzuki did palm up with the catcher's mitt makes the catch for strike three. So two outs here's Beltre. First pitch drive inside corner to Beltre. He thought it was inside. Well, Tommy Cam and right on the corner. Black 17 inches plus a little black on each side. Change up and it stays low to Beltre. One and one count. Michael Young, the on deck hitter. Look 
down the right field line, but foul. Well, we talked about it on Monday night, Ray. The Texas Rangers have not been shut out this year. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Napoli hit that home run of the ninth inning to keep it going. He's trying to do it for the first time. The crowd, they're into it. One and two. Tap slowly to Rosales. He's got it. Sprints to the bag, and that's the ball game. So Brian Fuentes comes in, nice clean save, and the A's shut out the Texas Rangers by a final score of two to nothing. And a tidy 204. Two hours and four minutes, and that's baseball at its best. He had great pitching both sides, everybody working very quickly. And Bartolo Colon, magnificent tonight for eight innings. And Brian Fuentes, big sigh of relief for him to get three outs in the night. 2 nothing is your final. The A's over the Texas Rangers. You've been watching Oakland A's baseball on Comcast Sports Net, part of the NBC Sports Group. Don't go away. A's post-game live with Henry Wolford and Shooty Babbitt starts right now.